Today we're talking about African dressing. As you should already know, humans are the only animal species on this planet that require clothing to live and you know clothing that have to come from all the living things, you know, skins of other animals and products of other plants that we all put together to create other layers of coverings for our bodies. And the question would be, do we really need all that covering for our survival? Do you think we need clothing to actually live? Because I think some of the things we shall uncover in this video will shock and surprise some people so do well to watch to the end and then you don't miss out on all the good good stuff because i saved some real cool stuff for last and let me know in the comment section what you think do we need clothing to survive hello guys and welcome back to the service YouTube channel my name is michael founder of Cevix an african storyteller and i host the talk africa series and we bring this every thursday to you and do well to give us a like and that helps youtube recommend this content to more persons and know that i appreciate that so if it's your first time on the channel click on the subscribe button click on the bell so you're notified every time we make new content don't forget to leave a comment and give us a like and if you're regular welcome back know that i really appreciate every second you spend on this channel you guys are the reason I take my time to create content. So thank you for being a part of this community. So let's talk about African dressing. How is it different from what you have in other parts of the world? What makes it unique? Why is it so special? And yet, why is it the most misunderstood form of dressing, you know, from all over the world? And before I get on to answer all of those questions, just know this. Warning! First, what I say in this video does not apply to every single tribe and community in Africa because we have 55 countries and at least a billion persons living on this continent. So that's a lot of people. So we're going to have some stuff that apply to certain people, tribes but not in all the parts of the continents because if you understand how the african continent is structured you know that we have a different set of people cultures traditions in northern africa different from what we have in southern africa different from what we have in western africa and you know the more you move into each region the more you're gonna learn just how different we all are but beneath all that diversity, you're going to find certain basic principles that hold us all together. And number two, if you're not African, there are certain controversies about African dressing and I'd like to address that right now and that'll help you decide if you want to watch the video to the end or not. Uh, when I said controversy, I actually meant hypocrisy because in some other continents you have these controversies raging about whether people dress too little like when you see the swazi girl or the zulu girl or the himba girl you might wonder maybe she's wearing a bit too little but then the same set of people also see this arab girl and they wonder isn't she way too covered you know take off some clothing you know so i'm not interested in deciding what is decent enough what is too much or too little but know that we would not be having those conversations here because as far as we're concerned it's all hypocrisy and this is what i mean in europe and america you'd recognize this as a clown but then the same persons who knew what clowns were and understood that they were just for entertainment purposes saw masquerades and in many african cultures attend them satanic devilish and encourage people to discard that culture so what makes a clown acceptable and a masquerade evil and then here again is another example now that's a nudist beach in france and we have that scattered across the world and i'm learning there are at least 10 nudist beaches scattered across southern africa and you know maybe more would come up who knows so that's a nudist beach and those people are you know real nice people who just like to experience nature but then uh, these yeah these are savages you know natives uh, uneducated uncultured uncivilized now what the hell is the difference between the two they're all bunch of naked people walking around right 
and then you're gonna look at a full dressed house man in his babari guy in his uh hula and all that and he's looking really cute and then uh, there's a man in a suit and tie both well dressed now what makes a suit and tie superior to a babariga or to a danshiki or to an ishiago or you know you know so all across africa we have every kind of dressing you want to see and in this video we're interested in exploring the beauty of these african dresses and why people dress the way they do when how and all that we shall discuss starting now so first why do people dress the way they do well i think it depends on a number of things number one if you're male you're likely to dress differently from a female of course there are a few cultures where People wear similar body coverings, but in most African cultures, what the man wears is markedly different from what the woman wears. And we're going to see more of that as we proceed. Another factor is age. When a person is considered a child, they are dressed differently from the way we would dress an adult. And unlike what you have in Europe and America, it has nothing to do with the size of the clothing. It has everything to do with what comprise clothing for a child. So in some cultures, children are not as well dressed, but as they grow and as they experience a rite of passage and become men and ladies, then they could get a few more body coverings because then they have something to hide. And then top occupation, whether you're a hunter, a warrior, a traditional ruler, an entertainer, all that would be told by what comprises your dressing and that way you can easily tell oh that's a chief oh that's a warrior because then you see them all ready and prepared and good to go and then next would be ethnicity in nigeria we have these two lovely neighbors who live side by side they are the thieves and the domas despite having very different origins very different cultures they have something that might seem very similar and that is the way they dress. So the main distinguishing feature between a thief and an idoma when they are fully dressed is the colors that they wear. So while the thieves wear the black and the white, the idomas wear the red and the black. So besides the colors, it's more or less the same. So through a person's dressing, you can easily tell where they come from. It's easy to tell that these people are from North Africa. It's easy to tell that these are Zulu warriors. It's easy to tell that these are Igbo men because they wear the Ishiago all the time and all that. So where you come from to a very large extent will determine you know, how you're gonna dress. Then let's talk about power. You can tell a man of influence, a man of affluence, a man who has a lot of you know, political or financial power by what they put on. So the more jewelry, the more accessories they have on, the greater the chances that this person is of some importance. Because in Africa, titles are not taken for fun. Titles are taken because people have made certain great accomplishments and have risen to certain cadres in society by their own sweat and blood. And that way it's easy for them to dress apart. So let's talk about religious roles. A person is a native doctor, a witch doctor, shaman, you know, whatever you call them. Even when they are Islamic clerics, it's easy to tell a person's religion or religious rules that they fulfilled by looking at what they have in their clothing. And then when there are celebrations or ceremonies, you can also tell because Africans tend to wear more colorful outfits when there are things to be celebrated and when there are you know fun things happening and everyone can gear up. So there are ceremonial wears. So what a typical African chief wears on a day-to-day -day basis why he attends to his people is not the same as he would wear when there was a large ceremony and he was coming out to entertain people from other communities and I know it's kind of the same in so many other cultures so then that's about how we have it here so whether we're celebrating having religious activities or trying to show our power ethnicity occupation gender or age all that can be told simply by looking at what a person is putting on. And next, let us look at what makes up a typical African clothing. 
first there is always the cloth and i know some of you might wonder do africans wear clothes oh yeah it doesn't matter how they appear they're always fully clothed so depending on what part of africa you're visiting you're likely to find body coverings that cover all of the body some part of the body or you know covers just very little part of the body and these body coverings can be made out of clothes out of leather out of you know it doesn't really matter and then you might wonder did africans have clothes could we make clothes of course we could so if you want to know more about that i could make a video about that in the next episode but yeah there is archaeological evidence that as far back as the 13th century before the trans saharan trade started africans had clothes they could make their own clothes and then you know they, there was no shortage of animals so they always had animal skins i think most african cultures at some time in their development had animal skin as clothing and then of course there were other plant derivatives that they could use to make clothes so some form of clothing that covered some or all parts of the human body were considered clothes but then a typical african dressing is incomplete without a headgear and you're going to see that prevailing even up till today africans love to wear headgears and it doesn't matter if it's you know fully african or something they have adapted over the time you know like the this hybrid cap that is worn by the calabari men with mirrors and beads and all that and uh, these were hats that they imported you know more than a hundred years ago from europe and they would eventually adapt them and convert them to cultural symbols so other things that consume part of an african's dressing would be body arts and this could be in form of tattoos piercings markings and scarifications so depending on the culture they all need these things to you know protect themselves i know that if you're not african and you don't live in africa you may not understand how scarification can be considered as part of clothing so first it helps those people grow thick skins and they're able to achieve that by embedding under their skin ashes from different plants or from very different materials that they are able to source out of nature now there's a significance to that when africans take part of a plant or part of another animal and they embed it in their skin and then let the skin heal over it they believe that they are reinforcing the relationship between themselves and nature and that way our people are more in tune with the plants with the animals that they most closely associate with so depending on what part of africa you come from there is always some form of body art that is trendy here is a very good example in northern nigeria where the people are predominantly muslim while they do not encourage tattoos people are able to get these temporary body markings that goes away after some time and you can see that on young brides and it looks just stunning so a very important point to talk about when we talk about body arts would be these very extensive body coverings like we can find in the himba people where they use fat derivatives and clay to make this mixture with which they rub and scrub their skin and then they let that stay on and that also forms a midway between body coverings and body arts the only difference is they get to renew this from time to time and it kind of helps them look really really cool and you can also see the classical case of the himbas because they also cover their hair in clay so unlike most africans who would uh, braid their hairs and have very beautiful hairdos the himbas just cover it all up in clay and it looks stunning yeah so next let's talk about jewelries if there is a people on earth that wear the most jewelries there would be africans now why do africans wear so much jewelries well i honestly can tell but we know for sure that it helps them look good so whether they are toe rings or ankle rings or wrist rings or neck rings or you know there are variations of these you can find lots of jewelries among most people of africa whether they are fulani or Maasai or yoruba like you know everybody wears this you know everybody wears some form of jewelries and it's all so good and talk about makeup I hope you know that the best makeup artists are Africans. If not, you should go check out the Woodaby people. This man, not the women now, the man, consume probably more makeup than all the women in Africa put together. 
and they are considered the most beautiful men in the world. So don't mess with Africans. We know so much about body art, about clothing, about jewelry and all that. But then let's talk about handheld accessories because did you think I was finished? No, the Africans are all about pump pageantry and we know how to put on a good show and so a typical african dressing is incomplete without a handheld accessory like a purse like a cane you know, like a walking stick and there are all various uh, forms of this for the fulani or the maasai you know it could be a stick or a spear or it could be all forms so from place to place it varies it changes but we love to hold on to stuff and it doesn't end with the purses and the canes we also have hand fans and someone is a really important person in some cultures they carry horns or elephant tusks and that shows that this man or this woman is very important and should be respected and while the horns in some places are just for design and they can use that you know for handshakes or to wave a paper and all that in some cultures the horn also doubles as a cup from which this person and this person alone can have a drink how awesome is that so if african dressing is so awesome why do people frown at it why is there so much uh, controversy about african dressing and i'll tell you, you know, there are three main reasons for that number one is politics through the transatlantic trade and the colonial periods the racist europeans who were all over africans did not want to see africans as their equals simply because they did not dress the same way and so when a person got a certain promotion or a certain recognition and got to work with the white men they were given shirts and shirts and they were made to go barefoot and that way they would be different from the others and they would get to also look down on other africans you know give them the impression that if you're not dressed like this then uh, you're just not good enough and in time our people would desire to wear nothing other than suit and ties because you know that's what seemed to be acceptable back in the days well grateful enough these days our people are waking up and we have cultures we have countries where they consider traditional african wares as official yeah but there was a time when that wasn't acceptable you couldn't you know go in your maasai garb and and go sit down in the office that was not permissible you could get penalized for doing that next let's talk about religion when the church people came they gave the impression that every form of dressing that was african was not good enough not modest enough not decent enough not worthy of holy places of worship and for you to qualify to come into a place of worship you had to dress properly and that's why we still have church clothes you know black people have church clothes irrespective of where they live whether they live in africa or they live in america or in europe they always have church clothes you know which are like special clothing you wear to the church so that you can be accepted so that you can be worthy of the divine presence of the missionaries how stupid is that god does not dwell in the clothing of men god dwells in the hearts of people but the missionaries did not see beyond that they just wanted to make it about church and so uh, when you joined the missionaries you also had to change how you dressed you had to wear the right uniforms you had to wear the right colors and all that next let's talk about morality now i talked about the hypocrisy of the west earlier on and people who accept nudists would also frown at natives who are not all covered up and i think that's as good as hypocrisy gets but on the other side let's talk about morality from a different perspective back in the days and in cultures where africans were next to nothing there were no incidents of rape there were no incidents of sexual harassment you know people were respectable and did what was right according to the culture of their own people but guess what now we are decent we're modest we're all dressed up and now 
you know sexual harassment is the order of the day you have uh, someone raped every day you have people raped every day research has shown that four out of every ten women has been sexually assaulted and all this in a world that claims to be modest that claims to to uphold morality and all that so i dare say that as far as morality is concerned we are vindicated because first we're not the most immoral people on earth we we're not even close to what uh, romans or greeks had 2000 years ago and right now we seem to be the only sane ones left and number two the rising incidence of immorality in africa has very little to do with who we were or how we used to dress it's more about who we are now and you know whatever it is we've been getting into our heads in this age and this time so i want to encourage you Go out there and find yourself some very nice African clothing. I bet you're gonna feel good about it. And do not hesitate to, you know, to use your African attires for, you know, whatever it is you do. Are you an artist? Are you an actor? Are you, do you run your own organization? You know, it's high time we started ditching those uh, customary corporate wares and started to consider making what was african corporate because that is in the heart of who we are and it's only in being ourselves that we can find growth that we can find truth that we can find progress and that we can become the africa of our dreams so guys do well to represent africa in all that you do all right that's about what we bring this video to a stop so if you have made it to this point oh my god this has been an excruciating and very long video to make thank you very much if you made it to this point do well to subscribe if you haven't done that give us uh, a thumbs up let us know what you thought about this video if you have an opinion let's hear it in the comment section let us know if there's specific content forms you'd like to see on this channel or there's stuff you'd want us to talk about do well to let us know and would we'll bring that to you Okay, so thank you all. Go love yourselves, love your neighbors, and be good.